Every game is literally like, it feels like a tournament game. Like you're playing some really good teams mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you don't really ever get a break to like a team that you think, oh, like, like we don't even really got to try hard to beat them. You know, like every game is super important mm -hmm. to, you know, just play your hardest. And um, it's just a battle. Ever since I've been in the pack, it's been, it's been like that. And so it kind of makes, you know, rankings and stuff a little tricky sometimes. You know, it's anybody's game. And so, you know, you just really, it really comes down to who wants it more. And, um, you know, it's, it's been fun to be a part of. Welcome back to Sometimes I Hoop. Today, we've got a highly requested guest on the pod. Quick humble brag about our superstar. Last year's Pac-12 Player of the Year, fastest Utah player to reach 1,000 points. She's second in scoring in the Pac-12 right now, averaging 21 points a game. None other than Utah superstar, Alyssa Peely. Thanks for hopping on the pod. Thank you for having me. We're headed into the final stretch of Pac-12 regular season. You guys are sixth in the pack and 18th in the nation. It's deep. Tell me, who has been the toughest Pac-12 matchup so far? Well, we lost to the same team <laughs> twice, I think, in a span of like three weeks. So Oregon State, oh, I mean, damn. They've, they've been playing really well. And, um, you know, they're, I feel yeah. like, a tough matchup for us. And we've been hoping, hopefully, we'll get them in the tournament. You know, third time's a charm. But mm -hmm. I think Oregon State, they've been playing really well. Talk to me about you hooping against the number one team in the nation. 37 points. I was watching it like, yeah, that's what she does. It's hard to stop. <laughs> what was your mindset like heading into that game? Because it was a huge game. Yeah, it was a really big game for us. And I think like personally, going against a team that's, you know, a, a very good defensive team and kind of like, I don't know, like I feel like I haven't played somebody like Camilla and, um, you know, other mm -hmm. posts that they had and they're very deep on the post end. So, um, I was a little nervous. So I'm not going to lie. I, I get kind of nervous, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, my mindset going into that game was just, you know, like, what do we got to lose? My mindset every game is really like, I don't care who's on the other side of the court. Like, I'm not going to play with fear or nothing like that. I'm just going to go out there and be me. So I think as the game went on a little bit, like I was feeling myself a little bit, I got comfortable and, you know, I just mm -hmm. started letting the game come to me and, you know, I ended up having a really good game. They threw the whole roster at you. And so tell me a little bit about, there's a big difference of play from the Pac-12 to the SEC, especially with a team like South Carolina. So you mentioned playing against people like Camilla and all that deep rotation of posts that they have. What was really working for you to have the performance that you did? Like they're different. Like Camilla obviously is, is super tall and, you know, I have to mm -hmm. find a way to, you know, like get around her, get her out to the perimeter so I could, you know, kind of, create in space because I'm a good I know it says I'm 6'2 on the roster but I'm a good like 5'10 <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you don't have to you don't have to come clean <laughs> <laughs> no everybody knows this though it's it's no shame in my game uh, yeah 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 but um when I have like shorter defenders like maybe like 6'2 6 6'1 6 6'2 6 like I try to um mm -hmm. you know just use my body well to create shots and I was kind of just using that uh, to my advantage the whole game with whoever was guarding me. Talking about Oregon State being our sleeper team, is there any players within the Pac-12 or outside of it that you've kind of been impressed by this season that was maybe under the radar in past years? Reagan Beers, for sure. Oh, quick. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, I hate playing against her. I can't even lie. Like, that's that's somebody who, you know, is like, could match me in like strength and so you know and she knows how to use her body so well and she has great hands yeah. and finishes so well like it's it's a hard matchup for anybody really she's i think been a player that i've been like super impressed with so far in the pack i agree and last year coming in as a freshman she had a huge game against us because like you know you scout somebody like oh they're a freshman she came in was handing out buckets i was like <laughs> oh <laughs> you're the real deal but talk to me a little bit about my girl, Miss Lauren Betts. What do you think has really improved in her game or helped her get to what she's doing this year? Confidence is a huge thing. And like, you could just see it um, in her game when she plays down low. When she's going to score, like, you know when she's going to score. So I just think yeah. that offensive rebounding, obviously she's a great offensive rebounder. And just like how physical she is, um, I think that's super important, like when you play in that position, so. 
Yeah. Another young player from L.A. that has been absolutely hooping this year, Juju. Mm -hmm. But what is it like going against somebody else like her that you guys have to really focus on when playing against her? We always say it's not on one person to stop somebody who's a great scorer. It's on our whole team. And, um, you know, just being being present and making your presence felt, I think, even when you're not guarding the ball. Um, and so, like, that's something that's super important when play, playing against a player like that. And, um, like, there's just some shots that she hits. So I'm just like, there's there's literally nothing you could do about that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, um, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. And, um, you know, I thought we did a great job on her last, last game. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to build on that. Switching gears for a minute here before we get into your early basketball, Beyonce's new album. I want to talk about this because you're an amazing singer. I've seen the videos. Hopefully one day I'll catch it live. But <laughs> we love Beyonce here. What's your go-to karaoke song if you're picking a Beyonce song? Like, what song Ooh. you're like, yeah, I can eat this up? Uh, One Plus One. Oh, my God. That's a good one. That's you? Mm-hmm. Wow. I love that song. Okay. <laughs> that's a classic. And then we're starting a new thing. It's going to be my my question of the day for the audience to get to know the way that your mind thinks. So this one's okay. going to be out of left field. I want to let you know in advance. So, like, <laughs> don't freak out about it. What's the biggest animal you feel like you could beat in a fist fight? Like, one-on-one, no weapons, in their terrain, you and an animal going head-to-head. Who do you think you can beat? Hmm. Probably... Uh, no, nah, I was going to say kangaroo, but I'd be seeing videos of them giving people hands. Giving people business. And <laughs> kangaroo Jack? Oh, my God. He was, he was giving out hands. <laughs> um, Shoot. What's a soft animal? I don't know. I'd probably have to go with, like, a maybe a black bear or something. I don't know. Wow. It's a funny black because, bear? <laughs> it's, I, I don't know if I can actually do it, but I heard. Because in Alaska, like, there's been some incidents where, like, black bears would come to people's campsites and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they said that, like, since it's, like, a smaller bear, like, you could, like, if you punch it in the nose, it would just run away. So I I feel like I could do that. Hey, yo, that'd be crazy. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, black bear's tough. Mine mine is a giraffe. I feel like I'd take out the knees and then go for it. A giraffe. I feel like I could do it. I don't know, though. Black bear seems kind of cooler than a giraffe. I'm not going to lie you were up. Boxing with one? That'd be crazy. I feel like I would only win if it ran away, though, if it worked, if my tactic works. Yeah, but you mentioned Alaska, so let's talk about your early hoops. Grew up in Anchorage, and before we get into it, fact or myth, is it true the whole, like, sunlight and there's just straight-up days of darkness situation? Because I feel like that doesn't work for me. Well, in the summers, like, in Anchorage, where I grew up, it's, the sun sets, but it doesn't really set. Like, it never gets pitch black out in the summer like it will always mm-hmm. stay like kind of light out in the town like a smaller town where i used to live um like there's it's called barrow mm-hmm. and there's like a span of like i want to say like two to three months where the sun doesn't uh set at all wow and then there's like it's the opposite like in the winter um like the sun doesn't come up for a couple months too so stop yeah. it what it's crazy. No, ma'am. I'm sorry. No. Props to you for dealing with that. I No. But talk to me about what it's like growing up in Alaska and in your community. You had a big family, four brothers, four sisters. You're the oldest girl. Tell me about that family dynamic growing up with that many siblings. I just had one, and I thought that was a lot. It was never boring. Like, we're always, uh, and zero privacy, because we lived in a house where, you know, there was two rooms. My parents have one of the rooms. And then one bathroom. Mm-hmm. And so um, we're always just like all up in each other's business. So it's like very mm-hmm. transparent. Um, and honestly, like like when people ask me about kids, like I always want to say like I have I want a big family because of like how it was growing up. Like it was so much fun. Like my family is super important to me. I mean, growing up, you played football with all your brothers and your dad coached their team. So was it true that he made you go one-on-one against every boy at practice? Because me personally, I'm not a football gal, so I, I could not handle that. So talk to me about if that's true and what that was like. Sometimes we would do this drill where it was just one-on-ones. Uh, you know, you got one person blocking, and I was the one blocking, and then somebody trying to get to the quarterback. Uh-huh. And so, like, he would literally just 
like have me go block and go through the whole line of boys and just be standing there like like we're gonna keep going until one of y'all beats her <laughs> like he's just like over there on the boy's head and you know like saying you're getting beat like you're getting beat by a girl and this and that so it was always <laughs> funny at practice <laughs> you probably never had any problems with their respect they knew it was up they weren't going to test you oh, yeah. that is crazy but you played a million different other sports having 13 state titles across your high school career first of all like how did you have the time for all of that you have four in volleyball four in shot put two in discus and one in wrestling and you sing so is there anything that you know you're not good at or you just <laughs> always been good at everything um shoot i don't know yeah i've i've always been my dad was wow like, yeah my dad <laughs> he put us in every any and everything like and we always like even if we weren't like doing it competitively like we did it at home or something so mm -hmm. i don't know it's just and it's just like a competition thing with my siblings and everybody like you got to be good <laughs> being from alaska you know what was your recruiting process like you were a five-star recruit three-time alaska gatorade play of the year what was that like getting recruited was it more sending in film or did people i'm sure they made the trip out to see you exposure has always been like a problem uh with sports in alaska and um like we just had people like my high school coach was really good about um like his connections and stuff like that so he has some connections to coaches and you know people who know people but really i think what uh helped me a lot was just traveling on my aau teams uh, in the summers mm -hmm. going to you know some good tournaments and just getting in front of college coaches and you know it was kind of tough because you know, you only play, you're only playing so many games and, you know, you have that much time to show out. And, um, you know, because once you go back to Alaska, ain't nobody going to watch you. So <laughs> it was just um, <laughs> like, you know, you had to show out and be prepared when you went. And, um, you know, that's that's kind of how my recruiting process went. So what made you choose USC? Was there any other schools that almost got you? Um, or did you always kind of have USC in your mind in terms of that's where you wanted to go? Once I went on my visit to USC, that my mind was pretty set. I still had a couple more visits after that. Um, I went to Arizona State um, and then Pepperdine. Mm -hmm. And um, Delisha Milton was the was the coach at Pepperdine. And so, like, I really I loved her. My oh, girl. My gosh. Yes. She's she's yeah. such a good person. She's the best. Yeah. I think, you know, like like I said, like when, once I went on my USC visit, visit um, you know, I kind of had my mindset that I was going to go there. And my brother, he was on the football team there. Um, so I had him there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I really liked the coaches there, Coach Erica Hughes and Coach Mark Track I played for. And mm -hmm. I'm glad I went there and experienced what I did. Um, and, you know, everything happens for a reason. And so, you know, in the in the, in the moment. That's what felt right for me, and that's why um, I chose USC. That freshman year that you had, it was lit. You came out <laughs> hot, averaging 16 and 8, Pac-12 freshman of the year. What was clicking for you freshman year? Because it looked like a lot. Pre-conference games, I wasn't I wasn't doing as well as I knew I should have. And, um, you know, I had some talk, talks mm -hmm. with the coaches and um, just kind of getting a sense of what they needed from me and, and kind of like, vice versa what I needed from them and so um I think going into conference the first game I think we played Arizona or something like that I just went out there and seized the moment really I stopped stopped trying to be in my head so much you know coming as a freshman it's it's kind of tough to do that because you know you're you're gonna make mistakes and it's new and so you know I, I felt like I was kind of letting that get to me a little bit but once I just let all that go and you know, went out there and just was playing more freely. And, um, you know, my coaches put me in great positions to um, to do well as well. So that helped a lot. And I think, you know, that turnaround for me was just what, what clicked the most of just, you know, not being afraid to um, go out there and, and make mistakes and, and, you know, just learn from them. Yeah. It sounds like we have a very similar mindset. Like we, we both play the best when we're free and not mm -hmm. thinking. And I think that that freshman hump is hard because you come from high school and everything's easy. Like right. you're chilling. Like I could 
pull up out there, do whatever. <laughs> but sophomore and junior year, you battle with some injuries. Mm-hmm. And then heading into your senior year, you decide to enter the transfer portal. And I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about the transfer portal and why people decide to leave and all these all this outside noise about it. So talk yeah. to me about what led to your decision and what that process was like for you um, deciding to go into the transfer portal. Like you said, I was battling with some injuries and things like that. So it was Mm -hmm. super tough for me to kind of bounce back from that. And I think like the Mm -hmm. biggest thing that got me was probably like just getting back to playing and then not playing like, you know, you could play. And um, Mm -hmm. it's just like frustrating. And like, like I said, it's a mental thing. Um, And so I think that's what that's what had me for for so long. And that's what was my problem, really. And um, my last year at USC, uh, we had that coaching change. Coach Lindsay was um, hired as our head coach, and then she brought in a whole new staff. And, um, you know, I was just, I was going through a really tough time, um, not only with basketball, um, but just with my family. I had, you know, three of my family members pass away within, like, half a year Mm -hmm. and so it was super tough on me um it was the first time I really lost people who were so close to me and so um I didn't really know how to deal with that and um you know I I might not have dealt with it in the best way but uh I don't know I just felt so like like I just needed a fresh start like I'm not gonna lie like there's when when somebody's going through a tough time like it's hard it's hard as a coach to know how to support them sometimes Mm -hmm. and especially with what I was going through and you know my family is so like dear to me that you know it kind of it just tore me apart so I I couldn't expect everybody to you know be there in the way that I needed them to be there for me or even like because I didn't know either to be honest like I didn't know what Mm -hmm. I needed and um so yeah that it was it was a mental battle for me um, my last year there. And so, like I said, I just wanted a fresh start. And um, I feel like that's that also like kind of pushed me to, you know, it's like it's almost like you're going back to freshman year. You got to prove yourself all over again. And, you know, you're playing for new coaches and things like that. So um, I think just having that discipline um, and just that commitment to you know, get myself out of this hole was, was what I needed to do. Um, and like starting somewhere new was, I think that little push for me and, um, going into the transfer portal, I really like sat down and talked to my parents and, um, just really thought about what I needed in a program and what was going to help me, um, based on like the experience that I've, that I've already had my last three years. Um, and so, you know, I think it was very more, very much more like intentional um, going going into the transfer portal. So. Well, I, I really appreciate you sharing all that with me. That is, that is a lot to handle, um, being a college student, being anybody. What was that like for you after having two tough years to be able to come out change your mindset, you know, work through a lot of different things and still be able to come out and perform like you did. Like, it felt so good. Like, I just felt like I was me again. Like, cause I haven't, I hadn't felt like myself for shoot for years really. And, uh, you know, just to get that feeling back and to do it with, with people who, you know, fully support you and, um, you know, believe in you. It was, it was such a great feeling. And, you know, at first, like, to be honest, when I was doing well, it, it it was kind of like nerve wracking in a sense, just because like, like, I feel like I was in a slump for so long where like, I had this fear of falling back into that slump. So it was like, Mm -hmm. sometimes I was putting that extra pressure on myself. And, um, you know, when I realized it's, you know, I work for this and, you know, I worked through everything to get where I'm at, like I kind of just took off from there. Was there maybe a game or practice that really made you feel like, yeah, like this is where I belong. Like you're feeling back to yourself and you're hooping and all this different stuff. 
I don't know if it was right before conference. It might have been like beginning of season. Like when we played mm -hmm. Oklahoma and uh -huh. I think the score was like 124 to shoot. I forget what they had, but it was just. Like I remember y'all whooped them. Y'all whooped them. <laughs> I remember. I've ever no. seen the score being like, oh. <laughs> No, but I think that game um, was was that for me just because, yeah. you know, it was just so much fun. Everything was clicking, um, you know, like it was just like we couldn't miss. And just playing with just teammates who like get joy out of like seeing their teammates doing good. That's just mm -hmm. like it's such a great feeling. And just like playing as a team, like. I know it sounds so cliche, but like that, it literally, it's so much fun. It makes it so much more fun. Yeah. You know, I think that was a game where I was like, like, I love it here. Well, that's a good game. Y'all won by like 80 <laughs> and y'all couldn't miss. That's a great game to pick. Yeah. But I mean, you were top of the Pac-12 and Utah's first time in the Sweet 16 since 2006, mm -hmm. 27 and 5 record. And you were the first Utah Pac-12 player of the year. Talk to me about just how... Because I remember we were there and we lost. And then that means we were co-champs. And I was like, ugh, you know? But, like, <laughs> it was, it was, the atmosphere in there was absolutely insane. So what was that like getting to kind of bring that honor to Utah and for Coach Lynn, who's been building that program for years now? Yeah, I mean, I say it a lot, but it's just so cool to see, like, especially because I've been in the pack since my freshman year. Like, just to see where mm -hmm. this program, like, kind of started and where it's at now, it's just... It's just so crazy to think about. Like, you would have never thought, um, you know, it would be what it is today. And, uh, you know, I just think it's such a cool thing that, you know, Coach Gavin and Coach Lynn have been coaching together for, for a long time now. And, you know, just having those two, like, build this program up from, from like, the ground up, it's it's just such a cool thing to, to see. And I feel like... Like, that's why this program doesn't get complacent and stays hungry just because, you know, they've been at the bottom. And, and you know, once you're at the top, you want to stay there and, and keep pushing. So, um, you know, it's, it's just it's a great thing to see. Um, and I'm super happy for, you know, the program and that I could be a part of this. Um, and, you know, Coach Lynn and Coach Gavin are they're amazing. And, um, you know, it's props to them for for doing what they did for this program. You're completely right. Seeing Utah our freshman year, it was like, uh, you know, <laughs> they were one of those games where it's like, okay. But then seeing you guys now, it's it's been a complete flip. Mm -hmm. But coming from last season into this season, you had your Alaska homecoming game. Mm -hmm. And it looked like, like seeing on Instagram and everything, how many people came to see you. I was like, is this all of Alaska? Like, it was crazy. <laughs> and you're a really big role model for a lot of the young girls in Alaska, but also for young Polynesian girls. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the impact that it had on you getting to go back and see everything that, you know, you kind of showed another gateway that people can take out of Alaska to play basketball and do all these different things. That trip was everything for me. And I was so, so grateful and so glad that we got to take that trip. Um you know, it it felt kind of weird playing in that arena just because, like, the last time I played there was in high school. And, um, you know, I even, like, I won my all my volleyball state championships in there, my basketball ones, and then my wrestling state championships. So it was just cool to, oh, like— Oh, wow, a lot, of, a lot of state championships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was just cool to, like, go back there. And it was just, like, one of those moments where, like, you're back where everything started and— um, like, it, it kind of just seemed like a movie or like a fairy tale. I knew I was making an impact, but I think that really opened my eyes to see, like, there's people that certain young girls look up to, to, you know, mm -hmm. kind of just find that pathway to, you know, doing what they want to do in life. And, um, you know, to be that for for the girls of, like, my same culture, it's, it's <laughs> I don't even... I can't even, I don't even got the words to describe it. Like, it's just, it's so crazy to me. Like, oh man, like, yeah. it's just so crazy. And I'm just so, I'm just so blessed and grateful to be in this position and to have so many people, you know, think so highly of me and, and just support me the way they do. So I couldn't agree more in that, like, 
being in that position is probably like, I don't think of myself that way. You know, yeah. your family gives you crap. You're doing whatever. Right. Like, you don't you don't think of yourself in that light. But when you have experiences like that, it's surreal. And mm -hmm. um, just tell me more about like, you know, the tattoos in the Polynesian community is huge. And mm -hmm. break down what that's like to not only for you to have them, but to see people like seeing you have that on national TV, on the biggest stage, how important it how important is that for you to share your culture in that light? It's super important because, you know, I wear like my culture of being Polynesian, being native, like I wear that on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, to be able to, you know, have a piece of artwork, you know, and, and tattoos are like, especially in like the Polynesian culture, it's like to tell a story. Mine doesn't have like a specific mm -hmm. story. It's just the designs, but um, you know, that's, okay. <laughs> that's kind of the the history behind that. Um, but just to have that and um, to kind of have that as like a piece of me to represent my culture and, you know, kind of showcase that out to the world. It's, it's super special for me. I just want to give you your flowers real quick about how amazing I think you are as a player, but it's crazy to think that as a person, it's even better. Thank um, you. But I mean, you're bringing Utah back to prominence from the moment you stepped on campus, this inspirational comeback, pulling yourself out of a dark place from sophomore and junior year and just being able to redefine yourself as a person um, in the national spotlight, being this, being this beacon that we talked about for representation for your community, I think is really special. And I give you all the kudos, all the flowers, all the things, as you know. Before we wrap up, we're going to get into our vibe check, which is rapid fire. Some guests have been great. Some guests have been okay. So I, I think you're going to do great. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll start it off with what's the drill you never want to see on the practice plan? Oh, three minute drill. What is that? It's so it's three down and backs every minute. But she doesn't give us the full minute. We got to finish it in 45 seconds. <laughs> And so that sounds about right. Yeah. We used to do that uh, if we would give up an offensive rebound on a free throw. That was terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not going to do that. Okay. Uh, game winning shot or game winning block? Game winning block. I feel like that's. Ooh, I feel like you're the first one to say that, actually. That's good. Okay. Um, where's the toughest place to play on the road and why? I want to say Colorado because, like, even though we're at elevation, like, yeah. their elevation is higher. So that one's a pretty it tough is. one. <laughs> Who's the biggest trash talker you've played against? It could be on Utah or outside of it. I don't know. I feel like people don't really, or I don't be hearing them really. But the only time I oh. did was probably LSU, Angel Reese. Uh, yeah, she be chatting. She be chatting. Biggest flopper. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh oh, uh -oh. Do we have an answer. <laughs> I'm gonna say Bella off of Washington State because I remember this one time. <laughs> You're so right. Vividly, where I had the ball and I literally like took a jab step, and this girl's already on the floor. I was like, bro, come on now. <laughs> That's a sleeper flopper. You're right. Okay. Um, who's the hardest player to guard? Reagan Beers. Oh, yeah. We talked about that be. earlier. <laughs> <laughs> What's your biggest basketball ick? I'm going to say when somebody got, I'm probably guilty of this too sometimes, but when somebody got a wide open uh -huh. left hand layup and they shoot it with their right hand. They're right. <laughs> you got to be safe. Better safe than sorry, honestly. Sometimes. Yeah, true. That's why I say I'm, I'm guilty of it too. <laughs> what is your favorite in-game celebration? I don't really be celebrating like that. Just, that's like, a lie. I be seeing you throw up some hands for threes. Oh, you be yeah, doing yeah, it that's too little I'm sometimes. I be seeing the sellies. I am always throw up the yeah. threes. We got some shooters for real. <laughs> if you could pick someone to play a two-on-two -two with and you can't pick a teammate of yours, who would you pick? Charlize Ledger Walker. Oh, a bucket. Okay, what's your favorite pre-game pre hype song? What is it? Up All Night by Drake, Nicki Minaj. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good pick. I like that one. Um, okay, last one is best impression of Coach Roberts. 
Uh oh. She does a lot of things. Hold on. I be seeing her yell at the refs. I be seeing her yell at the refs a lot. She be oh, up in their oh, ear. Oh my God. Good you know what that? she be saying a lot? Is she'll be like, <laughs> let me just use one of the refs as a, let me use Melissa. Okay, okay. <laughs> Not <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> she be like, she just be asking, she be like, Melissa, what game are you watching? Like, she'll be yelling at them. <laughs> like, I'm surprised she doesn't get thrown out. It's it's really crazy that she doesn't. You know what? You're so right. Because she be chirping in their ear. I remember there was this one time I was taking out the ball in front of your bench. And I was like right next to her. She was like, Haley, no, 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 just talk to me about something. She's like, Haley, you know you found her. Haley, you know you travel. I'm like, girl, I'm trying to focus right now, Lynn. She be chatting. But yeah. Not Melissa. Melissa be trying her best. She really do. And people be up in her ear too. Oh, yeah, I know. Alyssa, you've been so great. Thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thank you for having me. Of course. And thank you to everybody for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode of Sometimes I Hope. <laughs>